Okay, good morning, everybody. Those who are sitting here, those that are on Zoom, those that are uh, on Facebook, I want to wish everybody, first of all, happy Mother's Day. Can't forget that. All the mothers, since uh, all the mothers that are with us, they should have uh, only uh, health and happiness and and nachas from their children, and they have grandchildren from their grandchildren. And it should be, as by Jews, we say Mother's Day is every day. So, uh, but we live in America, the world, happy Mother's Day. Okay, my friends, we, uh, we have started Tanya together, and um, we started the beginning of Tanya. A, we uh, milled the first, uh, the first, uh, the first, uh, the first chapter we're holding in the English and the, the left uh, column on the uh, we find the Gemara. So here the Alter Rebbe introduces us a very important concept. Of, it is a very important concept in Torah, which is the concept of chitzonius and pnimius, that everything in life there's an outer thing and there's an inner thing in everything in life. What we see with our eyes is not always what is really true. And uh, we really need to be able to look at everything in, a, in, in, in two kinds of a fashion. To even look at ourselves, that there is a chitzonius and a pnimius. You can also call it oil and a kli. There's a vessel and there's a oil, there's a light that fills the vessel. There's a guf, there's a body and there's a shama and a godly entity that's in it. There is a world, and there is what is giving it its, its, its vitality, its strength, its energy. The, that's the concept in, 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 in the aspect of an inner and an outer. The Alter Rebbe is going to introduce us first to the outer, the outer part of ourselves. What is the chitzonius? When you meet a person and you ask him who he is, the Alter Rebbe says, brings the Gemara. And even if we're going to talk in this concept, with the Gemara, the Talmud uh, characterizes humanity, humans, and it says there are five different kinds of humans, the chitzenis, and the outer point, there are five different kinds of people. And, the, uh, the, the, and, and therefore, you, each and every one of us should pick, we're not talking about when he asks you, what are you, a doctor or a lawyer? But even as a Jew, there are five different kinds of chitzonius, outer people, even in, as a Jewish person. And there is, as it's brought down as follows. We find in the Gemara, we find in the Talmud, five distinct types. We find the Gemara says there are five different kinds of people. And uh, you'll be able to see these people in the way they act. That's really what we want to, uh, what, is, uh, what is a person? Sadiq, v'tayvlai. A righteous man that prospers in the, the Gemara terminology, it's Sadik Vitoivla, a Sadik that's good with him. Sadik Viraloi, a righteous man that is bad with him, uh, which over here it translates as suffers. But the meaning is you have the Sadik, right? In outside, you see he's a righteous man. You look, it's really hard to see in the two righteous people what is the difference. Because ra loy or toiv loy, meaning what is in him? Really, the question is what's in him? You have a righteous man. In the outside, he seems like a wonderful guy. He is this holy individual. But what is in him? You can anybody attest to what is in him? To what is the uh, to what is uh, it, it, what is he truly? What's truly inside of him? I don't know. He seemingly like this wonderful individual. He seemingly. And you could also, you, a person portrays himself in one way, but what is really he himself? He's portraying himself as this wonderful guy. He's portraying himself as this righteous person. What is that? What is in him? So you have a person at Sadiq, a Sadiq that is not only outside good, he actually is inside good. And then you have a Sadiq. You might have a person that is righteous. He's a, in the outside. He's a, this great phenomenal, holy individual, Vidali. If you're going to go a little bit deeper in him, you're going to find that he is carrying evil. He has the capability, if you push the right button, if you say the right thing or the wrong thing, you are going to reveal who he really is. And, and that's it. 
So that's the way humanity is. And then you have a bainini. You have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a wicked man who prospers, a wicked man who suffers. The same thing the Gemara said, Sat Rasha Vitavlai. A Rasha that on the outside he's wicked. He's a terrible person, seemingly. He's doing every sin in the book. But the truth is, Vitavlai, when you go into his essence, when you go a little deeper, when you go, you're going to find that he's good. He has good with him. He has some good. It's not, uh, it's not a total rotten apple. And, and then you have a Rosh Ali, which is almost hard to find. I mean, a person that has wicked in the inside and the outside. But there's a possibility he's a, totally to the core. He has no good, not in the inside, not in the outside. A Rosh Gomer, a complete evil person, which is probably very difficult thing to find such a person. And then you have a Bainini. You have a middle person. The toughest thing to know is the middle person. <clears throat> and the toughest concept to really evaluate and to really uh, come, to, uh, come to understanding is the middle person. That's why this book is called the book of the middle person. Because to be a righteous man on the outside and to not know what's inside, who that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a you know that's a, a certain category of a person. We're not going to deal with a person that's wicked, because nobody should be wicked. I mean, inside or outside, nobody should be wicked. And so even a Russia a table, a person that's a Russia on the outside, but he has good. He's a wonderful guy. He's always say the Gemara says. That a wicked person, Rasha Vitavle, is a person that keeps on saying, I'm sorry. So he, he knows that he, he can't control himself. Uh, he thinks he can't control himself. So Rasha Vitavle means a wicked person. He keeps on doing wicked things, whether it's in thought, speech, and action. We're not talking here killing anybody. We're talking about can't stop talking Lashinara. He tries on talking evil talk. So it's a apostate last week in the Tata. It's hard for him to control themselves. The Gemara says that we all have uh, certain things that we cannot uh, control ourselves every day in our life. We fall into an Aveda. So we're a Russia. We're, a <laughs> we're wicked people, but we're good people. And that's why we feel bad. And we dive in every day. We say, Slach lanu, kichatanu. Then we say, God to God, we want to ask forgiveness because we know we have done an Aveda. We know we have done a negative thing. So we're, we're good people. We're good people. So uh, really, we are good people. And uh, everybody is good in the essence. Everybody is good. Even if you're, without talking about a total wicked person, God forbid, everybody, even if he does negative things, he's a good person. He has goodness in, 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 in his heart. And he wants to do good. And therefore, he can't see ask forgiveness. How do we come to a situation where we're, we're not, we're not going to be righteous? We're not going to be wicked? What is the middleman, a person that what? He's not righteous, not wicked. What is he? And really, that's the Alter Rebbe wrote this whole book that we should reach up to not to be a tzaddik, maybe. If that would be possible, we should reach up to be a bainini. We should reach up to be a middleman. And what is this level? What is this level? So a bainini, is, it, 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 so is there, it, it is there explained that a righteous man in, in, in is a one who prospers is a perfect tzaddik. The righteous man who suffers is an imperfect tzaddik. That means he has. So if you're for a righteous man who prospers, that's called in, in that's called in the Talmud tzaddik gomer. You're good inside and you're good outside. Your light and your vessel, your body and your spirit are all in 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 sync. That's a complete tzaddik. That's a complete righteous person, in and out. Beauty in the inside and beauty in the outside. That's a tzaddik gomer. That's a complete tzaddik. A, a righteous man that suffers means he, he has something negative in him. It might be minute. It might be small. But it doesn't make a difference. He has the capacity, the capability of evilness. That's why, the, the, like the Gemara says, nobody should trust himself to the day they die. Even the Torah says that God never put his name on the name on the righteous when they're alive, right? God usually doesn't put his name on the righteous when they're alive because you never know because everybody has free choice. So even the righteous man has free choice. 
and he has the capacity to do that. Dovah Amelah said, "Libi cholub bekevi." That out there brings down. Dovah Amelah said, "I did tshuva, and I eradicated. I've gotten rid of my eight sahara. I've gotten rid of my evil. I don't have any eight sahara." So, in essence, a tzaddik gomah doesn't have the capability to do to do a sin. If you can imagine such a situation, doesn't have the capability to do a sin. It was a story in Israel that they burnt uh, the, uh, the 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 cave of Binyamin. Binyamin, the son of Jacob. The Gemara says Binyamin, the son of Jacob, never did a sin. Never did an aveda. Never in his life did a sin. Sadik his whole life never did never had the capacity to do a sin. There's very few people the Gemara chooses to say. That this person never ever sinned in his life. Binyamin was one of those, one of those people. Sadigam never sinned, never wanted to sin, had no desire to sin, never involved with a negative thing in his life. That's supernatural. That's why it's called Sadigam, it's a complete Sadik, supernatural. Supernatural. The Tzaddik Shein Gomer is also an unbelievable level. Yeah, Jenny, what's your question? What's your Hebrew name? Somehow it sounded to me. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your Hebrew name? What's up? What's your Hebrew name? Hannah. Hannah. Oh, what's why you Jenny? Hannah. Much more nice name. It's a long story. Okay, next. Yeah, what's anyway, your uh, my question is. It sounded to me a couple of minutes ago like you were equating suffering with a person who suffers as having an aspect of evil, like some kind of connection between, or, you know, you said a righteous man who suffers as some aspect of evil in them, but I, I'm having a little trouble with the concept of equating Well, that's why I, did, I, didn't, man, I, I, didn't, I didn't really use the word suffering. I see that in English he uses the word suffering, and I don't know why exactly. Because Tadik the table and Tadik the Raleigh is a, a good if you just take the wording itself, Tadik the Taylor, a righteous man has good with him, and a righteous man has bad evil with him. Maybe a, a tzaddik with a tzaddik that has evil with him, he translated over here suffering. I mean you can translate what Tav Loy is good with him, La Loy, bad with him. So the simple tr translation means that the, that uh, as I translated was as he has the capacity to do bad. That's it. Even though he's completely righteous, he doesn't do anything bad. Doesn't mean that he doesn't have the capacity because you go within him, you can find, you can ultimately find this concept. The mother brings the example. Yechonen Kayan Gadol. There was a great guy, there was a great Kayan Gadol. Yechonen Kayan Gadol. He was a Kayan Gadol in the base of Mikdash. He was a very godly individual and ultimately became a heretic at the end of his life. Nobody that is that 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 it, nobody should be put to the test. That's what we say every day in the morning. We say Don't give me a test. That's why that's why Davar Melech, when Davar Melech asked God for a test, God said that's it's very interesting that you asked me to test you. Even Avramavinu, which I tested, never asked me to be tested. So I'll test you, see if you can uh, handle it. And and we all know the story. So, so, so we asked the Abish not to test us because we never know what, what, even though we think that we're perfect, even though we think that we are so righteous and we talk against others and what other, other people's wickedness is, is. but uh, we asked the Abish to please, uh, I don't want the other person's test because maybe uh, I'll be worse than the other person. So because just because the other person did the negative doesn't mean I don't have the capability. That's why it says you shouldn't judge anybody. That's how I translated. If you want to go to the translation over here, the suffering, I mean, I can also explain it if you want. A person that is righteous, that has negative, is, is, is truly a great suffering to him. We might not feel suffering. That's out, out to that, but we'll explain later. The Benini doesn't really, uh, doesn't really care that he has uh, maybe negative. Because it's not a suffering to him. Negativity is not a negative thing to us. That's the problem. Negativity is just, okay, we have a bad character, but that's life. This is the way it is. I have a bad I have a hot, I have a hot temper. I am a, I have a, I'm a nervous person. I'm an angry person. I am a lustful person. 
just who I am, which I do. I I I can I can I can I, I'm that's I mean you're not suffering. <laughs> if I would suffer, if I would feel the negative, if I would I would I would I would really work on it because I don't suffer. I'm push it, I'm fine with it. It's it's fine. It's not the end of the world. So I think that's why over here they use the word suffering. Because a tzaddik suffers with his negative. That means a tzaddik, and as al would say, he hates it. He has to hate it because he suffers. The problem is we don't hate things. And therefore, we don't suffer. And we don't suffer. We don't hate. It all goes the same thing. Negativity is not something that we hate. We don't like it. We but not something that affects us in a way that uh, we get a stomachache from. We don't. We don't get uh, nauseous from evil. A tzaddik gets nauseous from evil. He cries when the when he when he when he deals with evil. For us, we don't like it. We're unhappy with it. But do we get nauseous? Do we suffer? No. And that's the problem. The problem is we're not suffering because of it. And and the truth is that's who we are. It's not a, It's not. It's not. A, I'm not trying to put down anybody. But that's who we are. So really, that's why the Alter Rebbe wrote a whole book of Tanya. Is to the middleman. Well, how is he, he's going to explain that? He has evil. He's not suffering with it. And how do we deal with that concept? How do we ultimately come to start working on our negativity that we do suffer, so to say, from it? And and it's it's something that we deal with because we need to feel the negative and we need to feel the positive. That's what the Abishta wanted. The Abishta wanted we should be joyful for the positive and feel sorrow for the negative. Real negative, not negative what we decide is negative, but real negative, real inner negative. That's the problem. We live in a world that we only suffer and we're only happy for outer experiences in life. We never feel it, realize the inner experience in life that's more important. That may be, that should be more important, I would say. So we need to look in the inside. We need to look at the vessel. Both are important. We need the vessel and we need the we need to we need we need our insight. We need to yes. Okay, that's hopefully I answered your question. So look at the man it explains that a, the righteous man who suffers is one whose evil nature is subservient to his good nature. Again, so he has evil. Again, he, for whatever reason, the translation over here wants to use the word suffer. <clears throat> but um, again, in in the Gemara terminology, the righteous man who has evil. That's really the, the simple meaning of the, the Gemara. Sadik Viralai. That he is a sadik, but he has da, he has evil within him. And stating that to the, the righteous who are motivated by their good nature. And so on the, in the Gemara, in the end of chapter Brachas, it stated that the righteous are motivated by their good nature and the wicked by their evil nature. Because right? ultimately, what motivates us? What pushes us? What pushes us is our midas, our nature. That's what pushes us, our rotten. What motivates us to learn, to, 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 to go out and get a job, to get married, to, 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 to do good things. It's all by our nature. That's the way the Abish to, that's what pushes the, 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 the wheel. That's what keeps everything rolling. And it's, it's our nature. Our nature drives us to do what we're supposed to do and to create things and to develop things. And even our nature pushes us to even do good. Right? Because Baruch Hashem, thank God, we have a good nature. We, not only our spiritual side is good, our nature side is good. We should realize that. It's not only that, oh, our godly side is good. Our, good, our physical side is good too. Our body is good too. Our insides are good too. We're not evil that is that our nature is bad. No. We even Rosh of a a wicked man that has good means he has a good nature. And that's why I said before, we keep keep on saying, I'm sorry, because we're good people. Even wicked people are good people. And that's the beauty. We shouldn't call ourselves wicked. And that's why the outside said at the beginning, a person shouldn't say he's wicked. To, you know, I'm a wicked person. Why would you say that? That you're only saying that, basically, to 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 live a, a wicked life, <laughs> and to say this is who I am. So even a wicked person, you say no. 
I'm doing this wicked thing. I know that, but but I'm good. I'm I am I'm good. I mentioned that yesterday. That a person should say he called the shani. A person should always say I'm holy. To say you're unholy, then basically now uh, okay. So you've coined yourself and you have you have uh, labeled yourself as a, a, a wicked person or as a negative person. Don't do that. The only way to get out of something is to say I'm good. And you are good. We are good. There's no, hopefully nobody is a wicked man who has evil inside, outside. Every person, even he has negativity, has good. The way to elevate a person, and I said, yeah, I looked at the, it's interesting, in the Pnikki office, it says, what am I yates and I love? The chnosim and I love. Words that come out from the heart reach the heart. Words come out of your mouth. <laughs> Words don't come out of your heart. Words come out of your mouth. The Mishnah should say, Words that come out of your mouth reach somebody else. No, but the Mishnah says, Words that come out from the heart. That means because when you talk to somebody else, you can talk down to that person. And those words never affect anybody when you talk down to somebody. But I'm to my love. The other person has to feel like you, you, you're talking to him from the heart. You're not talking to him from your mouth. You're talking to him from your heart. You're trying to uplift him. You're trying to connect him, not into like, not by, from above from him. You're trying to lift him heart to heart. Level, same level. I'm not trying to just force upon somebody else something. I'm not trying to put somebody down. That will be words that come out from the mouth. I'm trying, hopefully, to, to feel the pain of somebody else. I'm trying to talk from heart to heart. I'm trying to be uplifting with my words. The Abish just says to every Jew, I'm not here trying to, I'm not here trying to press upon you something. I'm not only trying to I'm trying to uplift you, Kadoshim Teal. I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to make you holy. What would be more powerful than I, the, the, the Abish, to wanting to uplift everybody? The Abish is telling even a Russia, Russia of a table, even a wicked person, the Abish says, the table, you have good. I'm trying to reveal your good. I want to help you reveal your good. I can tell the Russia, you're a Russia, you're going to go to hell. Which may be true, but uh, but, it, but that's not going to help him. What's going to help him is tell him that even though he's he's a Russia, he can ultimately, before he comes to the concept of going to hell, he can reveal his good, and they won't have to go to hell. He reveals his good. He will elevate himself and elevate everything mm -hmm. around him because he's good. But the Russia, the problem is the difference between a Russia and a Benini and a Tzaddik. The Tzaddik knows he's a Tzaddik. The Russian knows he's a Russian. Oh, when you look in the mirror, you know if you're a the Benini has the struggle. What is he? He is a complicated individual. The truth is that we are the Benini. Why? Because nobody coins themselves a Russia. Nobody looks in the mirror and says, I'm wicked. Everybody thinks everybody else is wicked, but he is not wicked. Nobody coins himself a tzaddik because we know we're not a tzaddik. So we are all the Benini. We are all the Benini. We don't want to coin ourselves a Russia. We can't coin ourselves a tzaddik. We are the middle man. And therefore, the Alter Rebbe wrote this Tanya for each and every one of us who don't want to coin themselves wicked, and we shouldn't do that. But we know we're not righteous, so what are we? We're the struggling Jew. We're the struggling soul. Which is each and every one of us who needs to do, who needs to, who needs to know who he is. As I started last week, we need to know who we are to be able to understand what we are and what's our journey. Who are we? 
And here the Gemara says who you are. So call yourself a tzaddik. In that level, you can have many levels. You want to call yourself a rasha? Well, as the beginning of Tanya says, what are you, what are you going to use that out with? Might, might make you depressed or might make you indifferent. <clears throat> call yourself, try to be the bainan. That's that's what the Alter Rebbe is going to uh, going to bring about in this lesson, in this whole Tanya. Know who you are, you're the Bainini, and therefore, not that you are the Bainini now, you're going to be the Bainini, you're striving to be the Bainini, that's who you are. In your outside and your inside, you actually might be, maybe not, in your outside, you might be portraying yourself as a tzaddik, uh, this righteous, holy individual, but who are you on your inside? You're the Bainini. You're the middle guy. And what does that mean? So we're, we're going to journey through this journey. And uh, together, we're going to really come to, a, uh, to knowing who we really are. So the Alta never continues. Any question you may ask, don't be shy. Because we, we want to learn to understand, try to understand what the Alta Rebbe is telling us. And, and uh, we only understand that through asking questions, through trying to understand. So. The Gemara, in the Gemara states, the righteous man is motivated by a good nature and the wicked is by his evil nature. While the intermediate man is motivated by both. And so on. That's why it's complicated. Because we, we are motivated by two entities. We are motivated by our chitzenius and our <laughs> We are motivated by our outer and our inner, inner, inner. And they're both good. And they're both not good. And that's what motivates us. That's what keeps us going. Now the Gemara, now the Alta Rebbe brings a famous Gemara, famous Talmud. Rabba, Rabba lived in the time of the second, uh, I'm sorry, Rabba lived, I believe, in the, uh, after the destruction of the temple. Lived on a very, very, very tough times in, in, in history. And um, under Roman rule. And Rabba was a great tzaddik. The Gemara, I think, says that when Rabba used to give a lecture, 12,000 people came to his drushes. 12,000 Jews. Yep. Big, he had a big, big following. Rabba was a great sage, leader of his generation. And the Gemara says, Rabbi Le as the Alter Rebbe will bring in the Gemara, Rabbi Le Pasuk Pumagis, Rabbi never stopped his, his, his lips from saying words of Torah. But even the angel of death could not uh, put him to death. He had to come up with a way to put him to death because he never stopped to study. So Rabbi was giving a lecture to very famous students, Abai and Rava, which is, uh, if you want to know who are the two rabbis that I've mentioned most of, most of the Gemara is Abai and Rava, two great uh, Amaroyim. Abai, uh, Rava declared, I, for example, I'm a Bainini. Rava said to his students, I am a Bainini. Said Abai, Abai said to Rava, Master, you do not make it possible for anybody to live. If you're a Bainini, then what are we? <laughs> if you're a Bainini, then we're wicked. So you can't call yourself a Bainini. You're a Tzaddik. We are a Bainini. But Rabbi came to school one day and show and tell. He said, you want to know an example of who is a Bainini? Look at me. I'm a Bainini. How could Rabba say he was a Bainini? That's really the question. It's impossible for Rabba to even say such a statement. So what is the meaning of Rabba? I'm a Bainini. Rabba should have said, and Abaye fixed him, and Abaye, his student said, Rabba, you can't say that. You can't say you're a Bainini. You are not a Bainini. You're a Tzaddik. You might be a Tzaddik virale, but you're not a Bainini. So therefore, but Rabba wanted to tell a student something. And nevertheless, Rabba wanted to teach a student. See, Rabba was not, didn't say a lie. He wanted to teach a student something. 
And that's the beauty of Tanya. Because Rabba, who was a great sage, as I said, Rabba was a person who never stopped learning Torah. Rabba was a tzaddik, self understood. But Rabba said, I'm a Bainini. I'm the Bainini. Rabba wanted to teach his students and all of us what the greatness of a Bainini is. What the greatness of this middle man. This middle man, this whole book of Tanya, Rabba in essence put us in the mode of what is a Bainini. He said, I'm a Bainini. So even though Abaya fixed Rabba, so he's challenged Rabba, but Rabba's statement still stands. Rabba says, I'm a Bainini. Because a Bainini is a great individual. A Bainini, to become a Bainini, is somebody who is accomplishes something in this world that no one else can accomplish. And to know that, that's to what you have to learn with Tanya, to know what the Bainini accomplishes in the world, in this world, and the upper worlds, and the purpose of what God created the world. In essence, Rabbi says the whole reason why God created the world and God created each and every one of us the world that we should all reach up to the level of a baby. So to understand this, to understand all the afores uh, uh, said clearly, an explanation is, is needed. And it's also to understand what Job said in said, Job said, Lord of the universe, thou hast created righteous men and thou hast created wicked men. What is that statement? For the for preordained, whether a man, for we know it's not preordained whether a man is righteous or wicked. So how does Job say, for us at Tzadikim, you're created in this world righteous, you're created in this world wicked. It's also necessary to understand the essential nature of the rank of an intimate. Surely that cannot mean one whose deeds are half virtuous and half sinful. For in this were so, how could the rabbi err to clarify himself, classify himself as a Bainini? So it's impossible, because that would be a lie. To say that rabbi sinned would be a lie, and rabbi is not lying. For it is known that he never ceased to study the Torah, so much so that the angel of death could not overpower him. How then could he err to have half of his deeds sinful, God forbid? Rava could not mean that a Bainini is a middle man that has half sins and half good. He's 49% evil and 50%, 51% good, or 50-50. That's not possible. That's impossible. Because Rava would never say such a thing. He would never say, he would never lie. Rava, because that would be lying. So for Rava to say he sinned would be a lie. So Rava, when he said, I'm a Bainini, meant that he, that he never sinned. And he knew he never sinned. So how would Rabbi say that? So we must say a Bainini is not that he has sins. Furthermore, at what stage, stage of a can a person be considered a Bainini? If a man commits sins, he's then completely wicked. If a person sins, he's a wicked person in the Torah. If a person sins and he doesn't do tshuva, he's a Russian. I know this is sometimes hard to, 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 to handle, but that's the truth. The truth is a person that is a sin he's, and he doesn't do tshuva, that's why you have the concept of tshuva. And that's why we, we do tshuva three times a day in Davani. We ask God for forgiveness. And the Ebishter forgives us. God forgives us. Why do we have to keep on asking God for forgiveness? Because we sin. Um, again, sin is not in the title that I go kill somebody only, or I murder somebody, or, or I steal from somebody. Again, sin is lush and hara, <laughs> talking evil. Sin is machshav zaris, I have evil thoughts. Sin in the title is that I lust something that is not mine. Nobody knows these things. Only me and God knows that I have a lust. It's in the Ten Commandments. 
do not convert your, 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 your neighbor's car, nor his wife, nor his donkey. And uh, uh, that's a thing that's given the lev. That's something that's a mitzvah. It's a negative commandment that every person knows within his heart. Does he have, does he covet? Does he have jealousy? Does he have the love? And that's an Aveda. So can you imagine, I'm driving down the road in my uh, Honda, and I pass by a Bentley, and um, uh, I suddenly have a thought of uh, wanting to have that Bentley. In the Torah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an Aveda. That's a sin. <clears throat> Last week in Pash Kedoshim, you have... You have uh, you have laws in the Torah that that the the, 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 said, the God says we had Asim el you shall fear God. Why does it say fear, why does it say always you shall fear God in the last week's portion? Because these are sins between that only God knows. So these are Avedas that only God knows. And and nevertheless, God says Why? Because God says I know the only one who knows it is me. But in the Torah, it's considered a sin. Why? Because the Torah says the Torah wants a person to be holy, not only to be good. Not only not to hurt somebody. You know, that you can be taken to court and be judged. The Torah wants you to not to do, not as, that we should elevate ourselves to be more than just not do bad. But we should also only do good. Because we should be a holy nation. So therefore, the Torah law, if a person's done a sin, he has to do tshuva. But I didn't hurt anybody. Doesn't make a difference. Just because, like we said last week, it says you shall not curse a, a, a cheresh. The Torah says you should not curse a, a deaf person. Why would the Torah say you shouldn't curse a deaf person? The deaf person doesn't hear that you're cursing him. What does he care? What 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 is the person that you're screaming at and cursing care? He doesn't hear. But the cursing of a deaf person is not what that person hears or doesn't hear. It's that you curse that is that I'm cursing a deaf person. <laughs> That's that I need to do chuva. I'm not doing chuva that I hurt anybody. The person didn't hear a thing. So what does it bother you that I'm cursing something? No, I never heard anybody. The person is deaf. The Torah says, you're not going to curse a deaf person. Why? Because I shouldn't curse a deaf person. And if I curse a deaf person, if that person didn't hear a thing, I still did an Avera. I still did a sin. And I needed to chuva. I didn't hurt anybody. The person didn't hear a word. And the truth is, a lot of, a lot of times I talk about other people, the other person never heard about it. I talk negative about another person. That, what does it bother anybody? If I'm talking to the person, so I'm talking negative about him, I'm hurting him, I'm, I'm embarrassing him. But when I'm talking to somebody else, what are, that that somebody, that other person goes and tells somebody else that I said something negative, that's his problem. I never told him to go tell somebody else that negative thing. I spoke privately. You know, usually when I say something to somebody else, I say, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, right? I'm going to tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody. Now you go and tell somebody else that. That's your evil. I never. I told you not to tell anybody. But still an Avera. It's still a sin when I talk about somebody else. Because when I talk about somebody else, I have to feel like I am hurting that person. Even though that person's not there. And not only am I hurting that person, I'm hurting myself. And that's really the sin. The sin is not about the hurting the other person, because I'm not talking to the other person, or I'm talking about I'm talking I'm, I'm talking to a deaf person. I'm cursing a deaf person. The person doesn't hear. But the real negative is not the other person. The real sin is me. The real sin is that I am talking negative. That's the real aveda. And that's the real tshuva. You know, in anything that I do, even if I steal, God forbid, which I am hurting somebody else, 
I have to do two things. I have to repay that person, and then I have to do tshuva. That I that I'm a ganav, that I'm a, that I can steal. That's the sin that I do between me. That's the tshuva. That's the repentance I do between me and God. I pay the guy back. I asked him forgiveness. He's happy. I got he got back his money, and he forgives me. I still now need to go do tshuva between me and God, that I have done a negative thing. I've stolen. That's why we say Avshavnu, we have stolen. Avshavnu <laughs> v'gadnu. We're ganavim. <laughs> Whether we gambit from, from another person or we are ganavim, we stole from God. And what have I done? I've done the tshuva to me and another person, but I still need to do the tshuva. That's why we have to realize that being a Russia, wicked in the Torah, is not only when I hurt somebody else. That makes me wicked. No, when I hurt myself. When I have evil tendencies, I have evil character, I have evil words, I'm a Russia. I'm a wicked person. And I need to do tshuva. I need to repent. I need to work on myself. I need to work on my character. I need to make myself better. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good way to, when you look at yourself as wicked, do you know you have to work on yourself? I did a sin. In Chassidus, it tells you, not knowing what you're doing is worse than knowing what you're doing. When a person doesn't know whether he's wicked at all, that means he's out of control. He's, God forbid, has no comprehension of who he is. When a person knows that he's done something, he's done a negative thing, then he knows what he is. He knows that he's done something wrong. That's why there's a karb machatas. There's a sin offering in the Torah when somebody's done a sin. Because he's known he's done a sin. And the Abish just says, whether you're going to bring an animal, whether you're going to bring two birds, whether you're going to even bring flour, at least you, you, know, you, you know you've done something wrong. And you have the capacity to fix it. Now, Yom Yom, it says, the first way to come to heal yourself is to know that you're sick. If you don't know you're sick, then you'll never heal yourself. That the day which gives you a, gives us sicknesses. You know, there's some sicknesses in the world that the, you don't know you're sick. It's like could call a deadly. Uh, uh, you know, quiet death, God forbid. The person doesn't even know that he's sick. The fact that a person knows that he's sick is already on the way to healing. That I, I know that I, I have evil tendencies. I'm honest with myself. I know that I have, I'm on the way to healing. I have the capacity to heal myself. So that's the beauty. When a person, when a, when a, when a man commits a sin, he's deemed completely wicked. But when, a, when he repents afterwards, he's deemed completely righteous. That's it. That's why they able to put chuba. That's why God gave us chuba. We are negative. Fix it. Don't walk around with guilt. <laughs> guilt, Jewish guilt it doesn't help anybody. You need to do chuba. When I need to fix it. I need to fix it. And I should never make the same mistake again. Right? We ask chuba and now make another mistake. Make another mistake. We're humans, but never make the same mistake. I should fix it. That that I keep on saying I'm sorry for the same thing, that shows I never fixed it. So therefore, we should never, we should, we should know if we're wicked and we should fix it. We should fix it. Even the one who violates a minor prohibition of the rabbis is also called wicked. Don't hide your wickedness. Don't hide. I shouldn't hide my sin. Oh, I only did a rabbinical, a rabbinical negative. Ah, it's not so terrible. No. Fix it. Don't be wicked. Fix it. Don't live with your wickedness, whether it's big or small. Don't justify it. Don't say, oh, it's only a, some, a minor thing. Who can? No. Fix it. That's not going to make you a tzaddik by fixing it. But it will but it'll make you a non-Russia. <laughs> it will make you not a wicked person. Nobody should be wicked. Nobody should be wicked. This is an important concept you should know. 
The Gemara says, God doesn't give something that he can't handle. God doesn't want anybody to be wicked. God begs everybody. That's the vow. Do not be wicked. Don't be wicked. Nobody should be wicked. That's it. Nobody should be wicked. We should all be good people. Don't be wicked. Don't convince yourself I'm wicked. Don't push the thing under the rug. Whether it's big or small, fix it. Change it. Be good. That doesn't mean you're going to be righteous. Don't be wicked. That's the vow. Please, God, ask the soul. Don't be wicked. It's two vows. Don't be wicked. As the Altar of the explained, don't be wicked. And then the second vow, be righteous. But the first vow is don't be wicked. People, don't do bad. Nobody is justifying in doing bad. Nobody has the right to do bad. Nobody can say, oh, I'm an angry person. I'm a So you're an angry person. Don't get angry. Just because you're an angry person gives you the right to be angry. Overcome it. Fix it. Control it. If you need help, go get help. But don't be bad. Nobody has an excuse to be bad. That's why I believe the Torah is pretty harsh with the concept of bad in the Torah. Because nobody should be bad. There's no excuse to it. So I know that you have desires and you have, you have weaknesses and you have, but just don't be bad. And if you do bad, okay, you fell through in a weakness, fix it. There's no excuse. Every person needs to take responsibility in, 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 in his life. He has to take responsibility. That's why you're an adult. We all are adults. We need to fix our negatives. And there's nothing wrong with that. Being negative and having that, there's nothing wrong with that. That's humanity. But the Abish just says, I made you, I gave you the tools to fix it. That's the expression I want to fetch, don't fetch. Stop fetching. That was the Rebbe writes in the Sighing and fetching doesn't, doesn't, a thousand, one act of, one act of fixing something is more better than a thousand size. Stop quetching. Fix it. That's what the Abishta brought you to the world, to be a fixer, to be uh, in the service. Do something about it. Don't just see something and don't do something about it. Do something. When the Abish just shows, the Abal Shanta taught us that. When God shows you something in the world or in yourself, do something about it. Don't sigh. Don't cry. Cry over, cry and sigh over others' issues that they should do something about. It. But in myself, do something about it. Be proactive. So that's what we need to do in in, in our own in our own life. So if we have. We know we have negativity, as Alton Ebbett says, whether it's a sin in the Torah or whether it's a rabbinical thing, or as it continues, continues to say, it doesn't make a difference. Any negative thing that I have in my being, I need to fix it. Even if he violates a minor prohibition of the rabbis, you know, it's the cult wicks it, that's it. If you're not going to fix it, you're wicked. Don't try to hide. I'm not, Alton Ebbett is Alton Ebbett was a man of truth. He always demanded truth. That's it. The Alter Rebbe, you know, the son said it, the Alter Rebbe wouldn't demand so much truth. He would have many more chassidim. But he, he said, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to demand truth. Be honest. Be honest. You, 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 you've done something wrong. That, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. If the, it, it, that's why the Abish gave you to fix it. If David didn't give tshuva, then it would be the end of the world. But God knows humans are going to sin. They're going to do negative things. But he said, okay, fine. 
I'm gonna make I'm gonna match, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna bring you the capability to fix it. I'm gonna give you all the tools and the capacity to fix it. So it states in the Gemara Nida, moreover, even the one who has opportunity to perform another person against sinning, when you pass, you can't say see no evil, do no evil. The Torah says, if you walk by a situation and you say, I see no, David says, you're a sinner. You're carrying the sin. If you could have stopped it, you should stop it. Why did God show you this situation? So you should fix it. So even the Torah law, I didn't do anything. I did, did nothing. That guy is sinning. If you can, if you can stop it, you should stop it. There's a very powerful verse in last week's portion. You're not going to stand in the blood of your brother. Meaning, if you can help him, save him. Save him physically, save him spiritually. You just cannot walk away. And if you walk away, you have done a sin. So there's no such thing as see no evil, hear no evil in Jewish law. If I have seen something evil, I need to try to stop it. I might not be able to stop it. And that's what actually the Torah says, it's a very interesting thing. I have to rebuke my neighbor. Which is a very difficult thing. Why? Because it actually says, if I rebuke him, and it becomes worse, then I made him sin. So I have to know how to rebuke somebody to make sure to make him better. Which is not an easy thing. That's why you have to be careful. But I'm obligated to rebuke the person. I'm obligated, when I see somebody doing something negative, to make him better. Because why would God bring me to a situation to see another person doing something negative? If not, then I should fix it. Surely try to fix it. So, therefore, moreover, even one who has opportunity to warn another against a sinning and does not do so is called wicked. <laughs> you have not done a mitzvah. If you're not done a mitzvah, then you have let something go by. Then I mean, you, I, <laughs> I have let something go by. All of the more, this is it. One who has neglected any positive law, which he's able to fulfill. For instance, whoever is able to study Torah and does not, regardless of this, our sage is quoted, because you have despised the word of the Lord. You could have learned Torah, and you did not learn Torah. It's called in the Gemara, Bittal Torah, neglecting the learning of Torah. Now, who doesn't do this one? So therefore, Terrible thing. Torah calls him a terrible thing. He said, I gave you the Torah. You're embarrassing the, my, my Torah. So, Rabbi. <laughs> yes. <if you're laughs> Am I depressing you? <laughs> you're driving, and you see somebody driving incorrectly, which is very common in Florida. Right. You're obligated to, to try to pull them over to the road. and, and I don't know. You're obligated to pull them over to the road, but uh, be careful. Road rage can be very dangerous. So uh, be careful. <laughs> what, are you, what are you obligated to do? It's an opportunity. If you have a chance, tell them, please, you're driving erratically. You're, you're putting other people in danger. Why wouldn't you tell them? But be careful. I do, do, just be careful. There's a lot of Meshagoyim out there. But um, uh, a lot of crazy people. But uh, yeah, you see somebody doing something not right. You should, you should say something. It's not, it, it, it's not it, it does the opposite. Just the opposite. You cannot just walk away. People always come and tell me things that people are doing in, in this show. Why don't you say something? Why, why is, I'm the only one. I'm the only one who's supposed to say something. You see something. You say something. You stop it. You see somebody doing something not right. You stop it. You don't just come to me a day later and tell me, what am I going to do about it a day later? You saw it. David should show it to you. You do something. You're an adult. You have the right. If somebody's doing something not right, I'm just saying this because somebody actually came to me yesterday. Tell me, oh, the, so do something. You're an adult, like I'm an adult. You see something is being is not being done correctly. You do something. 
you stop it. That's why God showed it to you. He wanted you to do something about it. Not to come to me, but you should do something about it. And that's the problem. We're all afraid to, do, to, 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 to stop things, to, to do something. I don't know why. I don't know why. So uh, for whatever reason, we have this fear in, 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 in helping others, in teaching others, in teaching others. I'll tell you, I, 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 I walked into yesterday, I, was, uh, I, I went to, to the show, the kids were running around and I, I gave them an education. I said, this is a show. Your kids, you want to run around, I understand, but this is a basic nest, it's a holy place. That's why there's a kid's place. You have to educate. That's your obligation. You see something, you need to do something. You need to educate, to teach another person, to be, be respectful, to be, to be good. That's our obligation. And if we don't do that, we missed an opportunity. And that's a sin. It might be a very low sin on the pattern pole. Nobody got hurt. And nobody uh, lost any money, and nobody. Uh, well, what is the difference? Where, where does the Torah evaluate? We we learn in Ephesus of Father, don't evaluate things. Every mitzvah is important, and every sin is not is important is important too. And there's no biggie and smallie. Nobody can evaluate what is a big one and what is a small one. Everything's important in life. And what's important to one person might be not important to another person. What's important to one person is important. So how do we evaluate what's important and what's not important? Everything is important. Every big thing and every small thing. And therefore, if we really want to talk in real MS, truth, everything good is an important thing. and Everything negative is a negative thing. And the second we start evaluating things is that's when we start doing bad things. And the second, oh, this is not, this not so negative. This is not so terrible. And that's why we become negative people. And that's why the Altered Ebbe says, this is not what we should do. Nobody should be wicked in any level of life. He should work on becoming good. And he should not be a Russia in any level whatsoever. Whether it's a Russia between man and man, whether it's a Russia between man and God, we should work on not doing bad things. End the story. Whether it's in driving, whether it's the way we talk to people, whether it's the way we deal with people, we should be good people. Because we are good people. And if we do something bad, we should fix it. It is thus plain that such a person is called wicked more than the one who violates the provisions of the rabbis. If so, we must conclude that an intermediate person, and this is why every person is not guilty of any one sin of neglect at all. We should not do one sin. And, and, and that's the beauty of the Tanya. The Tanya is going to tell you, is going to teach us all, we shouldn't do anything negative. That doesn't make us a tzaddik. <laughs> that just makes us who we are. Now, the Rebbe, I said a story yesterday. Uh, it was at the Kiddush. And people were... But the Rebbe, the, a guy once wrote to the Lubavitch Rebbe, and said to the Rebbe, I feel like a hypocrite. Why? Because I only go to synagogue on Yom Kippur. I only go to synagogue on Yom Kippur. I feel like as a, I'm a hypocrite. So the Rebbe said, actually, the Rebbe wrote him back, said the opposite. The day you went to Shul Yom Kippur, that's when you're not a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite the other 394 days. The other 364 days. That's when you're a hypocrite. Why? Because you're good. A Jew is holy. <laughs> that day you went to Shul, you, re- you lived your real life. You're living a fake life out of 364 days. That's where you're a hypocrite. 
got that. That's a very deep word. The Rebbe has to flip the whole thing around. So the Jew is not a hypocrite when he, when he lives a, a, a Jewish life. That's when he's living his life. When he's living a non way of life, when you're when you're living a negative, that's Russia's a hypocrite. The Bainini is a real life. That's what the Altareb is going to try to impress upon us. The middleman is the real life. The Russia is a hypocrite. That's when you're really living a hypocritical life. And the truth is, that's why this Chuva. Because Chuva tells you you always can go back to your real life. Your real life. Your real life is to be good. Doesn't make a difference between me and God or me and man. That's your real, that's my real life. Sadik might also not be a real life to be righteous. That might be also supernatural. I'm not asking a Jew to be supernatural. I'm asking you to be who he is. Living a Torah life, living a good life is a real life. Living a Russia life is a hypocrite. Is not a real life. Is being hypocritical. Living, doing something negative is hypocritical. Because it's not really who you are. It's not who you are. So how can you, saying something negative is hypocritical. Because it's not really who I am. I'm a good person. Why would I say something negative? Why would I think something negative? That's hypocritical. It's not who I am. And that's why I ask forgiveness. Because it's really not who I am. If it was really who I am. So what do I am asking forgiveness for? I'm asking because it's not who I am. And that's why I ask God's forgiveness too. Because it's not who I am. I'm really a good person. So when I act negative, that's what I'm being hypocritical. And that's why there's trauma. And that's why there's repentance. Because we all are good. We all are truly good. We are good in all aspects of life, whether it's in our spiritual life, whether it's in our, in our, in our regular day-to-day -day life, we are good people. And when we act not good, we are hypocritical. We're not acting the way we are really are true. And that's why, again, al Rebbe is going to tell you, the Bainini is the real life. The Bainini, the middle man, and it means a struggling man, the man who has duality, but make sure to say to his truth, make sure to say to who he really is, that's living a real life. That's living a real truthful life. You want to live a fake life? Go and be a Russia, Gesundheit. You want to be hypocritical? You want to live a fake world? Gesundheit, that's your choice. But know the truth. Living a real life is living a healthy, spiritual, good, honest, decent way of life. That is real. The rest is fake. We shall continue. I wish you all a great Sunday, a great week. Live a, live a good life and live a real life. And God bless you all. If anybody has a question, you may ask. I'm going to get off the light. I'm going to get off of the video of the Facebook. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful week. See you next week. We'll continue learning time.